Yeah, some of these things that you, uh, you might be like, duh, I knew that. And then some of them you might be like, oh, I never noticed that. Because they're like, they're built in, they're obvious, they've been there for a long time. But they're kind of, some of them are a little bit hidden. Um, you might not have noticed them. Um, and a small caveat, some of the shots in the presentation were taken a while ago. They, your admin might look slightly different now, but not, not significantly. It, all of the things still work the same way. Cool, so the first thing um, that you might not know is that you can hide um, or rearrange your dashboard widgets. Um, so if you head to uh, the dashboard in your WordPress installation, this is the kind of thing that you're going to see. Um, you've, this, these are like the standard dashboard widgets and um, you might not bother even looking at them or uh, maybe you do uh, find them interesting. Um, these are fine the way they are, but as you install more plugins, um, they're going to be uh, more and more of these widgets here. So if you want to hide any of them, you go to screen options at the top and uh, you can uncheck the dashboard widgets that you don't want. And then you can just click and drag um, to rearrange the page uh, and it might make it a little bit more efficient um, for you when you're logging in. Uh, so the second thing that you might not realize is that you can get help uh, for your uh, WordPress dashboard directly in the dashboard. So you might not um, know what this page does, might not know what some of these settings mean. Um, yeah, might not know what this page is for, might be looking for something that you're having trouble finding. And that help tab is also up at the top right. Um, it'll have some information at the left about the different things that you can see on this page. Um, on the right, it's got links to uh, the WordPress documentation and forums if you do need to ask a question. Um, there's also a cool thing with uh, this section. You can get a plugin. I believe it's called WP Help, but um, uh, maybe somebody can confirm that later, or I'll confirm it later, um, where you can customize this. So if you're actually, um, I'm getting a nod from D, so it's probably WP Help. Um, you can customize this section. So if you have clients um, and you're building sites for them, um, you can install WP Help and add your own descriptions into this help section to um, help other people use their site. So that's pretty cool. And also this help section is particularly useful with plugins like uh, WooCommerce or Yoast. So both of those plugins have set up wizards um, that can make the initial experience um, good, but you might have skipped that the first time you installed it or um, uh, you might want to go back and like reconfigure the way the basic settings work. And so if you want to access that wizard again, you can pop up, you go to the settings page for that particular plugin and then pop up to the help tab and the link to that wizard should be in there. Um, the third thing is that you can sort the way pages show in the pages list in your dashboard. Um, so by default, they uh, show up in alphabetical order um, with, and then child pages go below their parent pages. Um, you can click at the top of the page to temporarily resort them uh, by something specific, uh, like the date published, the title, uh, maybe you want to go in reverse order. But the other thing that you can do is um, you can use the page order setting. Um, the easiest way to access it, you can edit the page and access it on the right hand side, um, but the easiest way is to use quick edit. And then um, there's just a few settings in the quick edit section and uh, that page order is right there. So the way the page order works is that every page is zero by default and uh, the zero will be at the top, higher numbers will be at the bottom, um, and so maybe this Amazon store, uh, maybe it's like an embedded, it's got embedded content from Amazon. Um, I don't need to be editing it regularly, so I want to push it down to the bottom of the list. So I might make the order five and just bump it right down there. The other thing you can do is you can use negative numbers to make sure something stays at the top. So it's less than zero, it's going to stick at the top. 
So you might be editing your home page more often than some of the other pages. Um, so that can uh, make things a little bit more efficient if you uh, order them the way that you uh, find most helpful in that section. And it'll be more helpful as you have more pages. So it's not such a big deal when you've got just one page of pages like this. But once you get to like two, three, four pages, um, you don't want to be like clicking through alphabetically all the time. Uh, the other thing is bulk editing. So you can do this for both uh, pages and posts. Um, so to access the bulk editing option, you use the bulk actions drop down at the top. You check the boxes on the left hand side to say which pages or posts you want to edit. And then you choose edit from the bulk actions and click apply. So these are the options that you can do in bulk for pages. The template is interesting maybe if you've changed themes um, and you might want to um, you know, uh, apply the no sidebar template to a bunch of pages. Uh, and then you, disabling comments is like a really common thing that you're going to want to do in bulk. Posts are similar, um, but you can, you've got a few other options. So these particular two that I've selected, they're sticky, so I want to make them not sticky anymore. Um, get the regular chronology back in my blog. Um, I'm going to add a tag to them. So you can add tags to multiple posts. Um, you can also add categories. You can change post format, um, enable and disable comments as with the pages. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty handy. Uh, the fifth thing that you might not have noticed is that you can uh, really quickly and easily embed videos. So um, YouTube and Vimeo, I'm sure you know that you can embed videos, but um, all you have to do to do it is copy the link from the top of the YouTube page. You don't actually have to go to the share, embed code, all of that. Um, just grab a new line in your post or page, paste the link, maybe click enter or it might embed straight away. Depends how fast the JavaScript's going, but um, yeah, you can uh, embed it that quickly. And then for files that you've uploaded uh, to your site, so you can embed uh, videos and audio uploaded to your site as well. So you can link to the download of the MP3 or you can embed an audio player in the post or page. Also, you may not know that WordPress supports emoji. Um, it's kind of fun. So uh, all you need to do for that is access an emoji. So uh, if you've got a Mac, uh, it's control command space to get this emoji screen. Um, and then uh, if you can't remember that or um, you're not on a Mac, uh, you might want to use um, a website like uh, getemoji.com where you can just copy and paste whatever emoji um, you fancy. Uh, so I'm going to look for the bunny because I really love bunnies. I have two pet bunnies at home. You can check them out on my Instagram. They're pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, the piano guys are pretty awesome and bunnies are too. Um, and you might not have noticed that you can drag and drop images into quite a few different places uh, in WordPress. So uh, you've probably seen it where you go to add a new image and it's like, hey, you can drag it right here. Um, but you can also drag it uh, straight into the post editor and it'll upload uh, straight to the site there. Um, classic Australian internet, it's kind of slow, but you know, uh, it'll upload and then you can uh, click the insert button, change any settings that you want, uh, insert it into the post. Um, you can also edit images. Uh, so, you know, it's uh, just a few editing options, but um, really handy if you don't want to crack open Photoshop for just something like resizing or um, cropping. The way you do that, once it's uploaded, you click edit image on the right. You can scale the whole image. Um, you can click and drag over the image to create a selection and then click the crop icon um, at the top left to 
cause that crop. Um, you can do flip and rotate. And then also over on the side, you can apply it um, to all the image sizes or just to the thumbnail. So you might want to recrop uh, a square just only for the thumbnail, and that's pretty handy. And then you can also restore the original image. So if you decide you don't like your changes, um, or you changed the wrong image or whatever it was, you can restore this one. All right. The other thing you can do is you can insert multiple images um, at once. Uh, so not just a gallery, but inserting multiple images, um, even with different settings all at once. Uh, the way that you do that is you uh, hold down control uh, or command if you're Windows, Mac, um, while you're clicking on the images or shift to get a consecutive uh, bunch of images. And uh, then they're all selected. Uh, then if you want to change the settings, the insert settings for a particular one, the one that you're editing in the sidebar is the one uh, outlined in blue. And you can change the size and the alignment and uh, edit the caption. And then uh, clicking on another one outlines it in blue, doesn't remove the check icon from it. Um, so that's handy. And then once you've got all your settings right, uh, you can go ahead and insert them into the post. Um, however, you can also change the order um, that they're about to insert. So, you know, maybe when you were going through and checking them, you were like, oh, I want this one and this one and this one, but they're not in the right order. Um, you don't have to uncheck them and add them back into the selection. Um, you can edit the selection at the bottom. Um, and so you can click and drag these to reorder them. Uh, you can remove them again from here if you want. You can uh, edit a few of the details uh, if you need to. And then uh, once you're ready, you can insert them into the post. And you can go back and forth between those screens and you won't lose your settings. Um, so that's inserting individual uh, images in a bunch. Uh, you can, of course, also create galleries. So to do that, uh, you go to your Add Media screen, and then before you start selecting, or actually even after, click Create Gallery, because they'll stay checked even if you started checking them before you click Create Gallery. Uh, and then you don't have to hold down Control when you're in the Create Gallery section. You just keep clicking away and adding your images. Um, so the difference between the gallery and the inserting all individually is that um, the gallery um, has a, a layout. So, um, yeah, it goes in columns. It chooses a specific size of the image and applies those same settings to all of the images. Also, uh, random is kind of interesting. So you might notice they're all square except for that one. And I think the reason for that is... Um, that file was really enormous and the thumbnail didn't get generated properly. But it's neither here or there. But I, so I removed it because I didn't want to deal with that right now. Um, but you can also edit your gallery after it's inserted. Um, so hopefully you saw when you click on the gallery, it outlines it, and you get the little pencil icon to uh, edit the gallery settings. Alrighty, so... Um, Obviously, you know you can make links in WordPress. Um, we're using links in posts and pages all the time. Uh, you can also add any custom link to a menu. Uh, so any external link. You know you can add pages to menus, um, and you, you probably have done that. But you can also add uh, links to whatever website or uh, that you want in your menu. Um, so there I'm adding a link to my photo blog which is separate to this website, uh, and popping that in there. And while we're talking about menus, uh, the other thing that you can do when you're on the menu screen uh, is you can check out the screen options. So there's a bunch of different settings for a menu that you can enable that are normally hidden. Uh, so screen options at the top right, you can enable things like a space for a CSS class, Tags, if you want to link to tag archive pages. Um, you can enable a description for your menu items. And so that depends on your theme as to whether the description will show up or not. Uh, but you can see 
Um, yeah, so that's where those go. So you could use the CSS class to style uh, different menu items differently. Um, and in the 2015 theme that I'm using on this site, it does support descriptions. So we can see how those look. It's, it's essentially like a subtitle for your, um, for your menu items. Um, something else you may not have noticed. So you've probably used the customizer to change a few settings in your theme, in your active theme. You can also preview themes in the customizer without having to activate it. Um, so one of the ways that you can do that is if you go straight into the customizer, it has the active theme and you can click change. This is one of the things that looks a bit different now. It actually loads the theme differently, but the functionality is completely the same. So you pick whatever theme you want to preview on your site. Um, you can uh, change the theme settings, see how they're going to affect your site um, before you activate it, before any of your visitors see the changes. Um, yeah, so I mean this particular theme, 2014, um, has a few settings. It has a custom way of showing featured posts. Um, it's got a color setting built in there. Uh, so yeah, you can play around, around with how the header and logo looks. So that kind of looks weird because it's on the side. Um, I think in the end I would have probably put it in a widget instead, something like that. Um, and then uh, the other thing that you can do in the customizer is um, preview widgets before they uh, go live. So you add your widget as usual, as usual and um, you can see it right there. So, I mean, if a lot of us are getting more adept at using the customizer now, um, but um, when I first wrote this point, a lot of people were still using the older widgets page under appearance, where you go appearance widgets in the dashboard um, and you add your widget to the sidebar, but you have to save it and then go to the site and look. This is cool because you can um, see the changes before your visitors do. Cool. So that's my uh, 15 things that you uh, maybe didn't know WordPress can do. So uh, we'll go to questions now. Just raise your hand and wave at us uh, for a microphone if you have a question. And maybe you have a question about one of the things Kristen demoed. Um, but I think we could probably also have time to just take uh, yeah, questions. Yeah, happiness engineer, happy to answer whatever I have the answer to. Right, or maybe there's something you have just always wanted to do and you're pretty sure there must be a way to do it, but you just don't know what. That would be a good question. Hi, I was wondering um, for bulk editing, oh. if you have thousands of products, is there a way to edit, bulk edit the product data, like the descriptions? That's a great question. I haven't really tried bulk editing products. My inclination, knowing how bulk editing works, is that probably uh, the description is not going to be uh, included because that's usually something that's unique to each product so you wouldn't normally be changing that on a bulk scale to add the same description because when you bulk edit it applies the new setting in exactly the same way to all of the things so like um, so if you're bulk editing products you might be able to like make them uh, all virtual downloadable that sort of setting that uh, is a simple setting, but descriptions I don't think would be included in that. I have a feeling, yeah. Well, that be great use case for the API to do that by the WooCommerce API. Yeah, cool. WooCommerce API? Okay. Come to my session tomorrow at 2.55. <laughs> All right, tomorrow at 2.55. What's your name, sorry? Andrew. Andrew, come to Andrew's session tomorrow at 2.55. So the question there was, how, how would you duplicate product? I think it's just saying you can duplicate products. So if you've got a product um, with a particular description, you can duplicate it a bunch of times so that that description is automatically filled. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, oh, we'd like it for the video, sorry. When you uh, change the screen options mm. to see different things, is mm. that saved at a user level? Um, so your client, if got a different login, won't see those screen options that you've changed? That's, yeah, it's definitely personal to you, and I don't know off the top of my head if it's saved in the database or as a cookie in your, it could be a cookie in which case it's you, but also only in that browser that you were using. Um, anyway, if you change the screen options for you, it definitely doesn't change them for somebody with a different username. Yeah. I find that I change images to be, to look better for a responsive situation. And it's really great to change it inside the dashboard without jumping out into Photoshop. Is there a way, though, that I can duplicate the image? So if I'm changing a big, a big image, but I just want to be a little square part of that, can I duplicate that image inside the media library? Yeah, that's a great question. Not by default. I am pretty sure there would be a plug-in um, that can add a duplicate. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not by default. Yeah, and I just got confirmation it's not a cookie. So, save, yeah, saved in the um, dashboard for your user settings. A uh, database, I mean. Brilliant. Oh, it's working good. Hi there. Uh, I've got a question for you about the, the media files. I, I've come unstuck. I've come from a, another background, so I've come from Joomla background, mm. and then I got into WordPress, and I, I got a little confused with the... the um, the, the images, so I'd have my, my, my main image in there and then I'd have a featured, featured image and I understood that the featured image would be 200 by 200, that was all good. Every time I uploaded my images, I'd end up with four or five copies of this image, all different sizes, a bit like as you were discussing there. And so what I typically do is I'd, uh, I'd get rid of, I'd keep my main image, that had its file name, and then I'd get rid of all the other ones and then the 200 by 200 one, I'd rename that small or something like that. And so then it, each of my blog posts will have the main image and then just the small one. But I'm wondering if that's uh, inefficient, if whether I should do, what I should do is let WordPress do what it does to the, um, uh, the images and create all those different copies because all those different copies are potentially being used uh, for responsive mode and uh, different screen sizes. Um, just yeah. a question on that. Yeah, it can vary um, depending on sort of what plugins um, you're using and uh, the image behavior that they invoke. But by default, um, those different sizes that are generated um, are usually um, called quite specifically. So if you go to the media library and say, I want to insert this image at the medium size, it's going to put the dash 300 times whatever um, URL in the post. Um, so it's probably better to leave them there. That said, yeah, with plugins, you can modify that behavior. So. Um, one example is the Jetpack plugin. Um, when the image CDN is turned on, um, it's actually uh, like using, it's adding a whole bunch of different um, references to uh, image sizes. And sometimes those image sizes are generated on the fly um, on the Jetpack servers. Uh, so in which case, it would normally be fine to delete all but the largest version. Yeah. yeah I, I've, I've tended to use the large version. Sorry. Hello, everyone. I've tended to use the large version in, 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 the, in the main blog, so that's mm. the featured image as such, and then, um, uh, or that's the main image. And, and then for the, the featured item, uh, it's been the small one, which I've re renamed. Yeah. What I was finding was sometimes the, the images, it wasn't finding them on certain screen sizes. And I'd look at the URLs and think, well, what's that URL? I don't recognize that. And, and it would have been, I'd be 350 by whatever. Yeah. Uh, and so I came a little unstuck there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that can happen. And the other thing that can happen is, so when I had that gallery example, and they were all square thumbnails, except for that one cityscape, that sort of thing can happen is where, yeah, you, um, not only is it the wrong dimensions, but um, it's also slow as heck to load because it's actually loading a 2000 pixel image 
in this space. So, yeah. So one cool feature around the intermediate imager sizes, so that's the small, medium, large, is that you can actually, they have a default that's set, but you can actually change what that size is set to. So you'll be able to find that via the general settings area, I think in the, I think yeah, one in for media. Yeah, settings media, yeah. Um, it's best um, to do that like when you were first setting up the site so that they're all kind of consistent and work with your theme. But if, um, you know, at some point you had a theme change or you decided that you always wanted thumbnails to be 200 by 200 instead of 150 by 150, you could make that choice um, as it might work better for what you're, mm. what you're doing. And if you find that you've deleted some images and now things are getting a little bit wonky, um, the Regenerate Thumbnails plugin, uh, you can install that, you click a button and it regenerates all the sizes that your install right now um, has specified, like whether they be from your theme or from like, say WooCommerce might generate sizes for product images and yeah. We have another question over here. Hi, Krista. I'm, hey. I'm Matthew. Um, back to the bulk editing, uh, editing thing, right? Hmm. Um, have you experimented with Gutenberg in any sense or way? Like, for example, with blocks and all those? So if I want to add classes to those blocks, have you, ex have you tested that out yet? With Gutenberg? No, I haven't done any bulk editing with Gutenberg yet. Yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Does anybody else have a potential answer for that one? Oh. One more question down the front, I think. Yeah, sort of uh, back to images again. Um, is there a sensitivity in the edit of image to the theme that is used? Because I found often that actually the edit fights the theme. In particular, like let's say 2017 or something like that, it starts being really challenging when you start cropping and doing things. It doesn't seem to be in any way sensitive to what theme does it require? Or is it entirely separate edit? Because it appears to be quite detached. Is there a way of making it sort of more? So what should happen is that if your theme requires any image sizes that are um, uh, different to your regular thumbnail, medium, large sizes, and you edit, in the media library, all of those sizes should be generated when you save the change to the image. Um, one thing that you might end up having a problem with is if you've cropped an image to smaller than a required size, um, WordPress won't blow up an image because then it starts losing quality. Um, so if you've Say you've got an image that is originally 800 pixels, you've cropped it so that it's 600, but your theme um, wants a featured image of 800, then yeah, you'll either, you'll either end up with layout or quality issues. So um, yeah, in that, in that case, yeah, you pretty much, if, if you find that happening, you pretty much need to find out what the recommended size for the theme is and just make sure that you don't go below that size, yeah. So um, thank you, Christian, for uh, dutifully answering all those questions and hopefully showing us all some things we maybe didn't know existed.